So a couple of years ago at our priest retreat, the priest, my community, we have a, an annual retreat where the priests from our year will gather. And uh, there's about 60 of us in, in my order at the moment. And we were just sitting in the dining room. We were looking around, myself and an American priest that I was sitting beside. And we just looked around and he just said, my goodness, they are, we are all completely different. Because we have, you know, we have a Colombian brother who was a street fighter on the streets of Bogota. Right. We have a Swiss guy who always arrives uh, 15 minutes early, and if you're not 15 minutes early, you are late. And then we have the Italians who arrive five minutes late because you haven't even started yet. What's the problem? You know. So, and then we have, and then we have our 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 Dutch, and we have our Africans, Africans. You know, the, the, the big personalities and big laughs and all this kind of thing. And um, we have our Russians, and we have Slovaks, and we have the Irish in the middle looking around with our with our you know sun cream put on badly, you know, <laughs> typical Irish, like the sun cream on the nose, holding a bottle of water, looking around, looking lost, like, I, like Irish pilgrims always do. Um, so, and we just looked around, like, and just like, we just look, just looking at my community, like, we're just so different, we're just so different. And when I look around Holy Family as well, uh, the young people that are here, we're all so different. And I'm sure any team of people, if you're a uh, New Thousand or Focus or wherever you may be, um, even within a family, even within a family of five, six people, you look around and there's the daughter who's so studious and then there's the son who only wants tractors and then there's the, you know, the, the, the little one who's kind of maybe the spoiled, spoiled one who's, you know, spends all of her time on her phone and just all completely different, same household, but just all completely different. And then the Lord in the gospel today repeatedly says, may they all be one. May they all be one. May they all be united. May, Father, that they may be one in us, as you are in me and I am in you. So may, may, may we all be united, as, as united as Jesus is to God the Father. Like they share a divine nature. They are, they are one. They are one. They are one God. So the Lord wants us to be, to be that united. How is that even remotely possible? when we are completely different. We're so different that how, how, how is unity possible? Okay, it's helpful to understand that unity does not mean sameness. We will not be united because we are all the same. If we are all the same, that's really, really boring. Imagine if we were all the same. Imagine if everyone was like me. <laughs> that would mean everything would work. Everything would be fixed. But there'd be no one to break anything. <laughs> It'd be really boring. No, I mean, like, if, if we were all the same, like, while we think, oh, the world, would be the world would be great if everyone was like me. No, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. Because all the things that I can't do wouldn't be done. I mean, if, if, the, wor if, 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 if the world was like me, there'd be no such thing as lasagna. There really wouldn't, like, because I have no idea how to make one. Uh, the world would live on sa sandwiches, which would be fine. That's because that's, that's what I do. So thank God there are, you know, there'd be no one to play the violin, which in the early stages is a blessing, the early stages of learning the violin. Um, but then the later stages, there'd be no one to gift us with that. See, our, and Father Paul, my founder, often says that the differences between us, the differences between us are what make up the beauty of the community. They're like different jewels on a crown. They're all, they're different. You're supposed to have diamonds and rubies and emeralds and that. And even the way they're cut, they're all entirely unique. So even on, on like a crown jewel, even though the, there the may be little diamond studs all around, they're all unique, even though they're still diamonds. So uh, unity, unity does not mean sameness. It's not like we will be united when everyone thinks like me. You know, we'll all be united when everyone is like me, when everyone finally cops on and is like me. That, that's not unity, because that will never happen. That should never happen. So we're not trying to make people like us. That actually that leads to pride. Then you know I'm, that means obviously I am the standard of everything, so everyone should be like me, and then there'll be unity. That's not that's not unity at all. That's pride. Unity. So how does unity work? Have you ever been to? Um, uh, it's kind of strange now. Football matches don't have crowds at them anymore. So when you watch the match uh, on TV, they have can, canned crowds. You know, oh, yeah. you know when they get closer to the goals and you know uh, it's it's hilarious to watch because there's no one in the stadium. Just the, the, you 
dong, over here, dong, dong, dong. That, that's all that's happening really. Uh, but they, they add this canned sound. But isn't it interesting when you see like a crowd watching a match, they're all individual people, so 80,000 people watching a match, or 40,000 per side. And, um, and when something happens, everyone spontaneously does more or less the same thing. Everyone cheers, oh, yay, boo. You know, everyone does more or less the same thing on cue. Individuals. But there's something that unites them. There's something going on that unites this crowd, this huge crowd of individuals. It unites them so much, it even unites people at home watching the match. They're united doing the same thing as the crowd. Go, oh, you know, they're going to do the same thing at home as what's happening in the stadium. So this is what we're talking about in a way, analogically speaking, when we're talking about the faith. Unity is not that we all have to be the same, sameness. The same the unity between husband and wife, it's not when the wife and the husband are exactly the same, have the same beliefs and the same thoughts and the same reactions, and then they'll make a good couple. You've heard the expression, opposites attract, right? You may have seen it. You have a look at your own parents, you might have seen, you might, you might see it there. Introvert marries extrovert sort of thing. Uh, but there's, if there's something that unites them, there has to be a principle of unity, and that's what brings us together. Not that we're the same but that there's something that unites us. And that something for us as, as Christians, as Catholics, must be the Lord, it must be Jesus. If Jesus is at the center then of what we do in the church, then the church will be on the right road. Whereas if what's at the center is, you know, everyone getting involved or everyone feeling kind of important and, and wanted, okay, you'll have a nice little community, but ultimately it becomes self-serving. And ultimately, you'll find it's closed. We serve ourselves, but no one else is actually able to get in. So everyone will keep busy, and everyone will have their, all, all the things to do, but you'll see it won't grow. It, it's stagnant. Because the principle of unity is not God. If the principle of unity is the Lord, then it's not about me. It's not about everyone doing things like me, or for me, or to serve me, or to make me feel important. But it's about him. That they may all be one, Father. May, be, may they be one in us. <clears throat> may they all be one in God. May we, be, may, may we all be united in him. So that he's our principle of unity, no matter where we are, and the differences of our language and culture and experience and family and our hurts and our joys and our dreams. Despite all, the, all of those being radically different, we can actually be completely united. We can actually be one, despite all of our differences. We can actually be united in the Lord. And this, this, this must be the case. Because, I mean, if you look at the 12 apostles, they're completely different. Do you know, you've got, you've got, heads, you've got Peter, who's just so headstrong and impulsive. Um, you've, you've got, like, John, who rests on his heart. But yet John was the same guy. Him and his brother James, they were called, like, Boanerges, sons of thunder. Right? So, like, and they were like, you know, who's going to have the best places in heaven? I want to I wanna place in your right-hand side, Lord. Come on. You know, so, like, they were very different characters. But yet the Lord wanted to unite them in, in one, one group, one church. But not because they were all the same. They weren't all fishermen. They weren't all from the same echelon of society. If Matthew was a tax collector, that means he was smart. So all these different people, and yet they have to form one church. So once the principle of unity is clear, then we can, we can be united despite our differences. Unity does not mean sameness. Unity means love for the Lord. And if the church is full of people who, who actually love Jesus, actually know him, and actually want to serve him, then we will be united. And if we are united, then we will be magnetic. People will want to be part of a church that, that, that's, that's welcoming and beautiful and convinced about what we believe. And that will be the future. So we ask the Lord today to renew us in our unity with him, in our oneness with him, in our desire to, to know him profoundly, to love him with all of our hearts, and to serve him in the simple everyday actions of our lives. Amen.